in this uh, we are going to study uh, what we call the higher order constant coefficient homogeneous equation so we're going to uh, study higher order higher order a uh, constant coefficient constant constant coefficient homogeneous equation uh, homogeneous uh, differential equations um, so such an equation has this format uh, so you can write a equation in this format for example um, uh, we have a uh, y to the nth derivative plus b y to the n minus first derivative like that so this is going to keep uh, going and then so we have uh, c y equals 0 because it's a homogeneous so we're going to set it equal to 0 so that's imp uh, important and later we're going to discuss uh, how to solve non-homogeneous equation but that's a, like a completely different uh, theory uh, so there are a few uh, important results that you need to kind of uh, focus on and then we assume that this a b all the constants are uh, they are all constants so that's that's the important part so a b they are all um, constants are constants that's why we call it the constant coefficient so constant coefficient So there are a few results that we want to kind of recall. Uh, so one is the superposition principle, the superposition principle. Superposition. So what it says that so suppose uh, y1, y2, yn because it's an nth order differential equation, so you can find n solutions. Uh, solutions. Uh, solutions of uh, so I'm going to call this equation one for later reference. Our uh, solutions of uh, equation one, then if you write a linear combination like that, then y x equal c one y one c two y two like that c n y n is also is also a solution solution for any that's the important part for any c1 through cn so that means if you know solutions y1 through yn if you consider a linear combination that's also going to be a solution later if those y1 through yn are linearly independent we could talk about what is linearly independent uh, in a general case as well these are linearly independent then this is going to be the general solution so let's write it uh, for future reference so we can say if if y1 y2 yn are linearly independent linearly independent are linearly independent uh, then the linear combination above the linear combination in the linear combination above is the general solution is the general solution of the differential equation one so that's uh, for that uh, what we need is those solutions has to be linearly independent uh, we can talk about that in a minute so uh, let's continue and then also uh, there's one more question whether uh, there is a solution actually it is very interesting uh, for the homogeneous equation there is always a solution uh, so that's, that's one of the very interesting uh, if a not equal to zero we assume that a not equal to zero otherwise it's not nth order so um, so let's talk about that. So a theorem. Uh, this is what we call the existence and uniqueness.
uh, so if uh, f is continuous continuous on an open interval i open interval i then a y n plus b y n minus 1 like that c y equal f x always has a unique solution has a unique solution for any initial condition for any initial condition conditions actually because we need like n conditions here uh, y a uh, equal b naught y prime a equal b 1 like that and then y uh, n minus first derivative a equal b n minus 1 where we assume that a belongs to the same interval i we discuss above. So, this is very powerful result what it says that if f is a continuous function on an open interval interval has to be open open interval then uh, the constant coefficient differential equation the actually uh, the non-homogeneous one uh, always has a unique solution for any initial condition that satisfies these conditions y a equal b naught so those b through b naught through b n minus 1 are constant so we assume that these are constant so we write it like that uh, so then there's a implication so there's a uh, result coming out of this so this means that this means that the homogeneous equation equation uh, a y n plus b y n minus 1 plus like that c y equals 0 because that is a constant that means we always continuous. Um, has a solution so this always has a solution according to this result because zero which is a which is a continuous function so zero is a continuous function this is a continuous cts we use cts for continuous continuous function so that means it's uh, the theorem gonna apply for that okay so that's about that um those are the kind of uh, theory parts uh, we need and then let's talk about what we mean by the uh, uh, linear independence so let's talk about that uh, so the definition so we can talk about the general case so the linear dependence linear uh, dependence Okay, so the functions, the functions y1, y2 through uh, yn are linearly independent, are linearly independent, are linearly independent, are linearly independent if the equation if the equation uh, c1 y1 plus c2 y2 plus cn yn equals 0 has only the trivial solution has only the trivial solution has only the trivial solution trivial solution means uh, 
c1 equal c2 equal zero that's what you call the trivial solution everything is zero has only the trivial solution uh, has only the trivial solution for all that's very important for all x because we know that the y1 through yn are functions so that means this can if you if you try to solve for c1 through cn so you can solve for c1 through cn we, we try to set it equal to zero and solve for c1 through cn so if you get only the trivial solution that means we say those functions are linearly independent so that's a general case and we talk about that in in the case two but case two is slightly uh, different and easy because there are only two functions uh, so when you have two functions you can simply say that if one is not a multiple of the other so but that doesn't work for more than two functions so when you have more functions we have to go to the general case uh, like this so now uh, let's talk about this a little bit so then we have this uh, this uh, um, idea here so we can say if uh, the equation uh, can be solved uh, if the equation if the equation uh, can be solved for uh, let's say can be solved for c i not equal to zero so let's say you you solve it but you get some some non-zero uh, coefficient if that happens then what you can do then you can simply solve for y i because if this is a c i then you can solve for y i then uh, y i can be written and y i can be written as a linear combination can be written as a linear combination as a linear uh, combination as a linear combination of uh, other functions of other functions what does that mean that means uh, they are linearly dependent in this case In this case, the functions y i through uh, y n are linearly dependent. Are linearly dependent. So let's try to uh, understand this uh, from uh, from an example. So, uh, for example, uh, uh, we can talk about this one. So. Uh, example the functions the functions are e to the x e to the negative x and uh, let's say hyperbolic sign uh, shin x are uh, linearly dependent are uh, linearly are uh, linearly dependent Uh, why uh, so so if you want to show that something is linearly dependent what you can do is you can find a relationship between those three if you can find a relationship between those three linear relationship not like a uh, powers linear relationship then you can see the linear, linear independent that's what we call linear uh, so uh, so uh, so this is the answer for that uh, we know that uh, we know we know that the shin the hyperbolic sign is given by e to the x minus e minus x over 2 so that's how we are going to give you the hyperbolic uh, sine function now what we can do we can multiply by 2 uh, both sides and we can rearrange the terms so if you do that then you can rewrite this one you can first multiply by 2 and you can write it like that so it's 2 uh, shin x now what we can do we can bring the ex and the negative ex to the other side so you can write this one as uh, plus e to the minus x minus ex equals zero so you can see that this is a linear combination between those 
three functions for example c1 equal 2 c2 equal 1 c3 equal negative 1 so if you look at this then you can see that um, so the coefficient uh, c1 becomes 2 c2 becomes 1 and c3 becomes negative 1 so that means we can find some non-zero coefficients so that these three equations uh, are still equal to zero that means they are linearly dependent because they depend on each other okay uh, so you can say uh, so you can say there is a linear relationship there is a linear there is a linear uh, relationship so what does that mean so they are linearly independent they are linearly dependent so they are linearly they are linearly dependent so in this case what you can do you can solve for one from the others so that's the interesting part okay and then i will give you like kind of interesting result uh, there are some like common sets which are linearly uh, independent okay so let's talk about that uh, so uh, i'm going to give you this as a result so this is this is a really important one the following sets are a uh, set of functions are linearly independent uh, the following uh, set of functions are linearly independent I'm going to exaggerate this one, independent. The following set of functions are linearly independent. Uh, for example, uh, the most important one, 1, x, x squared, x cubed, like that. So if you write this set, this set is always linearly independent. Uh, the second set is 1. Uh, e to the lambda 1 e to the lambda 2 like that we assume that all those lambdas are different so lambda i does not equal to lambda j so if those lambdas are different this set is linearly independent and then the next one is 1 uh, sine x cosine x then sine uh, 2x and then uh, cosine 2x like that so if you consider this set these are also linearly uh, independent uh, good and the next one is uh, e to the uh, lambda now what we can do we can multiply by x or the independent variable uh, actually to the lambda x uh, yeah I forgot that here also it's, there should be x there uh, and x e to the uh, lambda x so keep multiplying by extra x every time so this set is automatically linearly uh, independent those those these four sets are like kind of good to remember uh, because this is like pretty much everywhere so these sets are linearly independent and we can show that they are linearly independent considering uh, the using a definition or some other technique so there's a result now the question is what if you consider a smaller set of this one like in a subset so it says that if you have a linearly independent set if you pick any subset any non-empty subset that's still linearly independent so you don't want to pick all of them if you just pick two or three of this it's still linearly independent it's, it's very clear that one and x are independent um, it's clear that sine x and cosine x are linearly independent it's like that so let's write this as a result this is a very powerful result um, so if you have as so i'm going to say the result result so what it says that um, any sub any non-empty subject any non-empty any non-empty subset non-empty subset of a linearly independent set of a linearly linearly independent set 
linearly independent set linearly independent set is linearly independent so this this is very easy to show uh, that's that's actually the case but you don't get the same uh, coefficients but you can still show that they're still linearly independent so that means we can use those special tests that we just discussed. Uh, so let's talk about the Ronskian test for uh, linear independence. So the Ronskian test, Ronskian uh, test for uh, linear independence. So it's the same thing. Uh, what we can do, we can extend this for higher order. So that means we're going to consider the uh, Ronskian of order n. So it is y1 y2 up to y n many functions so what we're going to we're going to have a larger determinant so it's going to be a y1 a y2 up to y n and then what we're going to do we can take the derivatives up to n minus first order because there should be n columns and n rows so it is y1 prime y2 prime y n prime like that and then y1 double prime y2 double prime like that y n double prime so keep doing it uh, and then uh, so we can write y1 n minus first derivative uh, y n n minus first derivative like that so it is y n n minus first derivative now what we can do we're going to find this nth so this is a n by n uh, determinant what we try to do we try to see whether uh, this is not equal to zero for some just one number for some uh, x naught so if you can find just one value for which this is not equal to zero then the uh, functions are linearly independent okay so i'm going to exaggerate this again so i'm going to say one point is enough one point is enough and we can show that so this this that part is little advanced but we can show that just one point is enough then you can say so let's use this idea to uh, show like a couple of cases uh, so uh, let's do first example uh, show that show that the functions 1 x and x squared are linearly independent. Uh, so what we can do, we can look at the Ronskian. So it's a W uh, one x and x squared. So let's write it. So we can write the functions first. Write the first derivative. Uh, write the second derivative. Zero, zero, two. Ah, uh, now. Uh, we're gonna go back to linear algebra in linear algebra we know that if you have a diagonal matrix then the determinant is simply the uh, multiplication of the diagonal entries so that means what we can do is we can simply multiply the diagonal entries so these are the diagonal entries so we're gonna multiply these three uh, that's the determinant so in this case you're gonna get uh, one times one times two which is two which is not equal to zero so that means uh, and then this is like true for all so for all x so that means they are linearly independent so the functions 1 x and x squared are linearly independent are linearly independent uh, perfect uh, so let's do uh, one more example uh, before we actually go to the major part of this uh, uh, this discussion so let's do next one uh, show that show that the functions e x are e to the negative x and e to the 2x 2x are linearly uh, independent we just talk about that that's the case actually because these numbers are different the indexes are different so it has to be independent but how to show again let's look at the run scheme so we have y1 y2 
y3 those are three functions so uh, so let's plug in so you're gonna get ex uh, e to the negative x e to the 2x let's take the derivative so it is ex negative ex uh, negative e negative ex so it is a 2e 2x and then here you get ex and take the derivative so e to the negative x and then 4e 2x now the question is how to find the determinant of this one so again we're going to go to linear algebra results so if you have a determinant like that uh, what we can do we can use the sign convention first so what's the sign convention we start with the plus sign and then alternately change the sign so plus minus plus and then what we can do we can pick any row or any column so i'm going to uh, pick the uh, we normally pick the row or column with most number of zeros but in this case you don't see any zero so what you can do is just pick any row uh, so i'm going to pick the first row and we start with the sign convention plus minus plus so what we can do we can write uh, this is what we normally call the laplace expansion so i'm going to start with the first term so it is ex that's the first term so we can start with that uh, so if you use that you're going to get the first term and then what we normally do is we ignore the row and the column of that entry if you remove the so you, re you remove the row and the column of that entry and the write the rest so in this case you are going to get negative e negative x so what you get is this part so you're going to get uh, this sub matrix so you can write that that's what you can write so you remove the row and column of that entry and write the rest here so it is 2e 2x e to the negative x 4e 2x that's the first entry so keep doing then it's a minus sign there's a minus sign with plus minus plus or minus next entry do the same thing delete ignore the row and the column so you're going to get ex uh, 2e 2x ex 4e 2x and then plus e to the 2x ignore the row and the column so you get ex negative e negative x ex e to the negative x now what to do these are two by two matrices two by two matrices are easy because we know that uh, if you have a two by two matrix a b c d the determinant is very easy you can multiply the first diagonal a d and subtract the other diagonal b c so say a d minus b c for two by two so these are two by two so that we can use that result here so that means uh, you're going to get simply uh, e to the x if you first multiply the main diagonal you get negative four times uh, a to the x and then subtract the other diagonal so you're going to get negative six e to the x minus e minus x and then the same thing you multiply the main diagonal and subtract the off diagonal so you end up with 2 e 3x so you can test whether that's the case as a practice because you have to do this okay the best thing is just try to do it with me so then it's be easy for you to remember uh, because you can remember all of them with a lot of stuff so the same thing you multiply the two so you're gonna get 2 e 0 okay and then once you simplify uh, what do you get you're gonna get uh, negative 6 e to the 2x and then negative 2 uh, e to the 2x and then you're gonna get 2e 2x you can see that uh, these two get cancelled so you end up getting negative 6e 2x this is not equal to 0 for any x so you can see uh, since since uh, the Ronskian w y1 through y3 uh, not equal to 0 for all x the functions y1 y2 and y3 are uh, linearly independent are linearly independent
Good. So, so this is the Ronskian test, and we use Ronskian test to show three functions. But it's the same thing. Four, but it can be complicated when you get because you get larger determinant. But but this is how we're gonna do it. Um, and also, I'm gonna. I would like to make this remark. We may also use the definition to show this linear independent, but it can be a little complicated. But we can still use it. So we may also we may also uh, use the definition we may also use the definition to show the linear independent to show the linear uh, independence good so so that's like kind of basics uh, you know uh, how what are the existence and what we mean by linear independence so let's try to go to the main part what's the main part how to solve such equations so let's talk about that now uh, good so solving Solving a constant coefficient solving constant coefficient that means it's automatically linear when you do that a homogeneous equation homogeneous a differential equation so that's the uh, major part so you can see that uh, we're gonna use a similar uh, idea here so the our e equation is a y n uh, plus b y n minus 1 like that so we have c y equals 0 uh, and then we assume that a b everything up to c r are constants so we that's our assumption we assume that there's a constant so what we do we use the same trick here when you solve our uh, constant coefficient equations we assume a solution of the form e to the lambda x it's the same idea so assume assume a solution assume a solution of the form of the form uh, y equal e to the lambda x okay so then so that's that's the assumption that's the same assumption that we did uh, for constant coefficient we just apply the same thing here then what you get is you can see that then the nth derivative is simply lambda to the nth power e to the lambda x you can see that because if you take the first derivative uh, you're going to get lambda e lambda x if you take the second derivative it is lambda e squared e lambda x every time you take a derivative lambda comes out so that's why you're going to get lambda to the n e to the lambda x so that means once you substitute that to the differential equation so uh, substituting so if you substitute you end up getting an equation uh, you you end up getting like this so uh, the first term becomes a lambda n times e to the lambda x b lambda n minus 1 e to the lambda x like that so you're getting c so you can see that uh, e to the lambda x you can take out as a factor so that's what you get but so you said this equals 0 that's the difference equation says but you know that this term never equal to 0 so that means only thing that can happen is what is inside the bracket is 0 but that is simply the characteristic equation so the characteristic equation so the characteristic equation is a lambda n plus b lambda n minus 1 like that c equal 0 so that's the uh, characteristic equation for a general uh, constant coefficient equation so the, this is just a polynomial in x so that's what you uh, understand this is a polynomial polynomial in a uh, lambda so we can use just basic uh, factoring techniques so the goal is to uh, find the roots of the uh, characteristic equation this is what you call the characteristic equation uh, so what we try to do is uh, find find uh, the roots find the roots when you have polynomial we call these are roots uh, if it is not a polynomial we normally call these are zeros it's the same idea find the roots of the characteristic polynomial okay. 
uh, characteristic uh, equation in this case. So we're going to find the roots of this. Uh, characteristic, actually it should be characteristic polynomial. Uh, when we have polynomials, we call roots. Uh, equations, we call zeros. So. Good. Um, yeah. So let's talk about some, uh, so case by case. So there are three cases, as you know. So let's go uh, case by case. Uh, the case one. Uh, let's assume that all those roots are distinct. So if uh, distinct roots are if distinct if distinct roots are distinct roots very important are lambda 1 lambda 2 through lambda n then you can write your general solution uh, then the general solution then the general solution is y equal c1 e lambda 1 x plus c2 e lambda 2 x like that uh, we assume that x is the independent variable so you can you can put t whatever you like uh, so c n e lambda n x so that is the general solution for this case it's very simple so let's continue so what if uh, there are uh, some some not um, may not be all some of them repeating so let's say case 2 so in the case 2 so let's say if lambda 1 uh, repeats k times uh, repeats k times what we normally call has a multiplicity k so that means has a multiplicity k that's another way to say it uh, and uh, rest r and the rest r I uh, will say lambda I mean you can say 2 but since we have k it may be better to say k plus 1 but it's just a like other values so yeah let's say this is the rest of them so lambda 1 repeat k times and then we have k plus 1 lambda n like that uh, so that means so what we are talking about is we have lambda 1 uh, lambda 1 like that k times and then we the next one I'm going to call it k plus one, like that. So that's that's those other ones. So there are k many. There are k. So in this case, the general solution. Uh, the general solution is. So what happened? We know what happened. Like you know, in the uh, two. Uh, in the case of two uh, solutions. So what we do, we multiply the second one by x. It's the same thing. We're going to keep multiplying by x every time. So that means uh, your general solution is y x or y. You can just say y, which is equals to c1 plus c2 x. And then uh, just keep multiplying by x every time. So what will happen? C k uh, is going to be x k minus 1. Uh, e to the lambda 1x so that's what happens so you multiply every time by x so at the end since there are k last one only multiply by k minus 1 and then the rest is very similar so the rest is going to be uh, you're going to be c k plus 1 uh, e to the lambda k plus 1 x like that so the last term going to be c n e to the lambda n x because we assume that they are different. So that is how the general solution looks like <coughs> when a one root repeats. But they can be multiple uh, repeating ones. So then just just group them, just group them uh, into uh, those one type. Okay. So 
for example lambda 1 can repeat two times lambda 2 can repeat three times so then uh, the first one you can write uh, c1 plus uh, c2 x e to the lambda 1 x plus like that okay so let's talk about the third case what's the third case uh, the complex so case 3 uh, so let's say some roots some roots maybe all but we don't need to say that here it can be just some of them so some roots Uh, complex conjugate oh this is one thing like if the coefficients are real numbers the roots always appear as complex conjugates okay that's, that's one result if the coefficients are real numbers if the coefficients are real numbers the roots always appear as complex conjugate uh, pairs okay so some roots are complex conjugate pairs complex conjugate Uh, pairs that's, that's very important complex conjugate pairs ok so let's say uh, lambda 1 for example is uh, alpha 1 plus or minus i beta uh, repeat let's say uh, so uh, repeats k times k times remember when it repeat k times it actually produces 2k many terms because there are sine and cosine terms that means in this case uh, okay so then we have the general solution y equal the same idea so you can uh, say as before so you can have uh, c1 and then c2x like that so we have c uh, that's the k term but the power only go k minus 1 and then we have e to the alpha 1 x cosine beta x plus a similar term for sine i'm going to call d1 plus d2 x like that Uh, d k x to the k minus 1 e to the alpha 1 x sine uh, beta x so there's a term for sine there's a term for cosine but the repetition part is similar to before you multiply by that uh, special term because there should be k many terms you can see that there are k many terms here see there are k terms k terms starting with the, the zero power good i mean that's it that's the theory part now uh, let's start, try to solve a few problems uh, so what if like you know uh, we have all three types so just do like one with all types so i'm going to say all types in one problem uh, for example let's say we have uh, so let's say say we have a uh, lambda 1 lambda 2 they are different and then we have lambda 3 that's gonna repeat uh, three times that's gonna repeat three times And then we have a complex conjugate root. So let's say we have these uh, seven. There are seven here, seven roots. Uh, so that means this is a uh, order seven uh, differential equation. It will be order seven. So your solution going to be y equal c1 e lambda 1 x, c2 e lambda 2 x. The first two are different. And then the next three repeat so this is a, a repetition so what we can do we're gonna uh, c3 plus c4x plus c5x squared e to the lambda 3x and then we have plus 
the sine cosine term. So we have C6 e to the uh, actually you can write C inside that but we normally write. So let's write it like that. It's easy. It doesn't matter how you want to write it. So let's write e to the alpha x and then we have C6 cosine beta x plus C7 sine beta x. Good. So that's what happens if you have multiple types. So you can just write it uh, like this. So let's try to do like a couple of examples just to kind of see how this thing really work. Uh, good. So some examples. So let's say I uh, find the general solution of find the general solution of let's say y triple prime minus 3 y double prime minus y prime plus 3y equals 0. Um, you know, so this is just a third order differential equation. This is a third order uh, differential equation. Uh, the characteristic equation The characteristic equation is what we normally do is we replace the derivatives by the powers of lambda. That means it's going to be lambda 3 minus 3 lambda squared minus lambda plus 3 equals 0. Now this is a cubic polynomial and then the question is how to uh, find the roots. So what we normally do is when you get a cubic polynomial, uh, we normally use the grouping technique. So we use the grouping method use grouping method uh, so what's the grouping method you're gonna group these two and those two separately and try to find the common factor so what's the common factor if you take a lambda squared out you can see that you gonna get lambda minus 3 now you try to create minus lambda minus 3 on the other one that means minus if you take the minus sign out or oh, it's a minus 1 out you're going to get lambda minus 3. Uh, now what we can do we can write the common term first. So if you write the common term that is lambda minus 3 the rest going to be lambda squared minus 1. Minus 1 coming from here. You can see that's the minus 1. Uh, now this you said this equal to 0. Uh, very easy to find factors. This one has uh, this one going to give you lambda equal 3. This one going to give you lambda equal plus or minus 1. So those are the uh, three roots. That means they are all different. Then we can write the general solution. So the general solution, the general solution is simply yx equals c1. Uh, let's start with the smaller one, e to the negative x plus c2 e to the x plus c 3 e to the uh, 3x. So that's the general solution for this differential equation. It's very easy. You just need to find the roots. So let's do another example. Uh, yeah. So let's do the next one. So the next one is uh, let's say uh, find the general solution of find the general solution of of let's say uh, y to the uh, fifth power minus 16 y to the fourth power equals 0 okay so it's a fifth order differential equation fifth order good so this is a fifth order Okay, so the idea is very similar, so there's nothing new here. So the answer is so you call the characteristic equation. So characteristic equation is simply lambda to the fifth minus sixteen lambda is uh, lambda to the fourth power uh, equals zero. Yeah, let's write it properly. 
doesn't look like 4. So 4 to the power equal to 0. As before, uh, you can see uh, what are the common factors here. Uh, good. Actually, I, I would like to slightly change this problem just to show you, like, you know, uh, something. I'm going to change this uh, differential equation. I'm going to change this part. Let's change this one to, uh, yeah, let's make it a little bit more interesting. Uh, so, actually, that's what I had in mind, but I tried something. Let's say this is just a prime. So, y to the fifth power minus 16, y prime equals here. This is more interesting. Uh, and then th this is what you get uh, in that case. So, you can see that it is y to the uh, y to the uh, prime and then this is going to be just lambda here. So, you can see this is much more interesting than the one we had. So, then what do you get? How to factor this? Let's think of the factors. So, if you think of the factors, you can see that lambda is common. So, I'm going to take that as a factor. Now, once you take that as a factor, what else you get? You can see that you're going to get lambda to the fourth power minus 16 equals 0. Now, how to factor the, the other one? You can see, you can use the difference of squares formula here. Uh, so, you can use a difference of squares. So, that means x squared minus y squared equal x minus y uh, x plus y. Uh, but how we can do it? Because you can write lambda is fourth as lambda is squared is squared. So, we can do that. So, we can write this one as lambda. You can write this one as lambda squared squared minus this one you can write 4 squared. So, if you do that, then you can write this one as uh, lambda squared minus 4 lambda squared plus 4. Very interesting. Now, you can uh, find the factors of this one again. So, this one you can write as uh, lambda minus 2 lambda plus 2. How about the next one? So, next one is the complex numbers. You know that. Uh, so, let's write the work here because you can write this one as lambda is squared minus 4 which is 4i squared. So, lambda going to be plus or minus 2i. So, that is exactly what we have now. That means this can be lambda minus 2i lambda plus 2i equals 0. So, that is what you get. Okay. So, those are all the uh, roots that we have. So, that means we can write the general solution here. Uh, so, that means we have lambda equals 0 here. We have lambda equal plus or minus 2. Here we have lambda equal, I am going to write a 0, 0 plus or minus 2i, put in the right form because then we know that alpha equals 0. So, that means this is the alpha and that is beta. So, alpha equals 0, beta equals 2. So, then we can write the general solution uh, for this one. Uh, so, let us try the general solution. So, the general solution is the general solution is uh, we can write y equal c1 plus c2 e 2 x plus c2 e negative 2 x. So, that is coming from the first three terms. 0 correspond to that, uh, 2, negative 2, and then we have the complex one. So, we can write this one as so e to the 0, which is e to the 0, which is 1. So, we can ignore that. So, we have C3 uh, e to the, no, this is 3, this is 4. So, let's see, so this is 4, C4, uh, there is no e term here. That term is gone because e to the 0 is gone. So, you only have cosine and cosine. So, we have cosine 2x plus C5 sine 2x. Perfect. Okay. So, that is the 
a general solution for that. Uh, so let's do uh, maybe two more examples. So the next one is, uh, yeah, let's do some algebra here. So solve, let's say y to the fourth power minus three y uh, sec a third derivative plus three y second derivative minus y prime equals zero. Uh, so let's write the characteristic equation. So the characteristic equation is lambda to the fourth power minus three lambda third power plus three lambda squared minus lambda equals zero. Uh, you can see that lambda is common, we're gonna take it out. It's always the best thing would be just factor as much as you can. Then we have lambda three minus three lambda squared plus three lambda minus one equals zero. So again, uh, this is a this is a third order differential equation. Uh, this is a, a degree three polynomial. So what you can do is you can use the grouping method, but you can see that it's not gonna work here because if we try to take uh, lambda squared from the first one, you wouldn't get lambda minus three. There is no way you can use, you can create a lambda minus three in the other one. So that means the grouping method does not work. So, uh, so the first thing we notice is grouping method does not work so what we normally do is in this case uh, we can use a factor theorem so use a factor theorem use factor theorem actually I'm thinking of like create a, like a video to kind of talk about those things you know how to factor uh, certain polynomials uh, because there are a lot of theorems. So this is like a, one is a grouping method and then we have the factor theorem and then we have the rational rules theorem and the lone division technique, um, synthetic division. So there are a lot of uh, different techniques. Uh, so just send me an email like and if you are interested in such a video, uh, then I can make one like that. So just to kind of combine all of those common techniques. Okay, so this is the factor theorem. What the factor theorem says that so let's say you have polynomial fx. So it says that if f a, so you just plug in a number. If a equals zero, then it says that uh, x minus a should be a factor. That's what it says. Then uh, x minus a is a factor. That's a factor theorem. So you just plug in a number. Uh, if it's gonna give you zero, then x minus a should be a factor. Okay, but how to use it? What we normally do, we're gonna try those common ones. So we're gonna try a zero, uh, plus or minus one, plus or minus two, things like that, like easy ones, or maybe like plus or minus one half. Uh, but you know, it's, it's kind of limited, but it's still, uh, it, it can be like kind of uh, come to the rescue in, in certain situations. So you can try those easy ones. That's the kind of idea. So let's use the same thing here. And you can see that uh, if you plug in one, it's gonna work. So if you plug in a lambda equal one, so we're gonna say try uh, lambda equal one. Try lambda equal one. So if you plug in lambda equal one to the uh, one in the parenthesis, you get zero. You get zero. That means lambda minus one is a factor. So that means uh, this says that lambda lambda minus one. So that means we know that the rest has to be a quadratic uh, because it's a cubic, it's be quadratic. That means we already know this has to be lambda squared. We don't know what's the middle term. We already know that uh, this term has to be plus one equals zero. Only thing that we don't know is the middle term. So you can just use a trial and error technique to kind of match uh, the middle term so you can see that uh, because just think of this next term you have to get negative 3 lambda square how to get lambda squared you can see to get lambda squared when you multiply these two terms you get a lambda squared term. so it's a negative lambda square so you still need uh, 
2 more negative. That means this has to be negative 2 lambda. So you can see if you put negative 2 lambda here, then you can see that you get another negative 2 lambda squared. So if you combine all of them, uh, if you combine all of them, uh, you're going to get uh, this term. So that's, that's the other way to kind of do that. Uh, or what you can do, you can use the law and division. So I'm going to show you that also. So if you use the law and division, so what's going to happen? So let's divide. So once you know one, the best thing would be use the law and division. So we can start with lambda 3 minus 3 lambda squared plus 3 lambda minus 1. Be careful when you do that make sure that you put everything like let's say one term is missing you have to put a zero in there otherwise you're gonna like you know make a it's easy to make a mistake so now we know that lambda minus one is a factor already so let's divide by that so if you divide by that you can see the lambda squared is missing here so then when you do multiply you're gonna get lambda squared a minus lambda squared you're gonna subtract them uh, lambda three actually lambda, lambda cube so lambda squared, a lambda cube, my lambda squared when you subtract, you're gonna get uh, negative two lambda squared. So you subtract, and then you're gonna bring uh, this uh, negative three here, negative three lambda here, and then what you do, you can see uh, what is missing is negative two uh, lambda. That's what's missing, and then when you multiply by negative two lambda. You're gonna get you're gonna multiply by that, so you're gonna get negative two lambda squared, and then you're gonna get plus uh, two lambda. Subtract when you subtract, you're gonna get lambda minus one, uh, and then you can see that this is one. So we need one. So when you multiply by that, you're gonna get lambda minus one. Everything works zero, perfect. And you can see uh, this is the uh, the missing term that we are looking for. That exactly goes here so that's the other way that's what the long division how to use the long division in a problem like that uh, so now we know all the factors so let's uh, finish the rest of the uh, problem so you can see that uh, so we have lambda lambda minus one and you can see you can factor the second term uh, which is going to be lambda minus one lambda minus one so we have lambda minus one lambda minus one that's what you get so that's uh, that term. That term I'm going to give you that. So finally, what we have is lambda lambda minus one to the cube equals zero. In other words, lambda equals zero one one one. We write it like that just to exaggerate. Uh, then we can write the solution as y equal c naught. So it's uh, uh, you can say um, c naught, and then these three repeats so it is c1 uh, c2x c3x squared uh, e to the 1x so that's the uh, that's how the general solution looks like for this differential equation okay good so we use a factor theorem for this problem uh, let's do the last problem uh, so so this is the last one. Well, I want to show you like different type of problems. So it should be easy for you. Let's say solve uh, y to the fourth power minus four y to the third power plus eight y to the second power minus eight y prime plus four y equals zero. Uh, again, the characteristic equation is lambda to the fourth power minus four lambda to the third power plus eight lambda squared minus eight lambda plus four equals zero uh, this is kind of interesting uh, the how to factor this so this is kind of complicated so you can see this is lambda squared uh, this is lambda squared squared this is two squared uh, so you can see that uh, so this is like a little complicated uh, situation uh, so what you can do is because uh, what's going to happen 
those roots are actually complex complex so and you can see that you can factor this in a, uh, like this so it's lambda squared minus 2 lambda plus 2 squared so you can factor it like that uh, but this is like a how to factor uh, like a, a quadratic equations like you know order for polynomial is like a different story uh, we can discuss that in a, uh, another video so I'm just show you like you know what's out there but you know this is like a very difficult question that uh, like you know uh, that we can ask in exam so you know but it just I want to show you like you know what's really going on but uh, I will I can ask a question like that in a like in a regular exam or a quiz because this is complicated okay so how you can get that but there are techniques to do that but it's not that easy because we normally don't try uh, like complex numbers in a question like that so it's, it's very difficult okay and then we can again uh, factor the inside function you can see you can uh, do the completing square here if you do the completing square you can write inside like lambda minus 1 squared if you do lambda minus 1 squared you're gonna get lambda squared minus 2 lambda plus 1 that means 1 is missing so that's that and it's squared so you can do like that now this says that if you uh, set this equal to 0 uh, so let's do that so let's lambda minus 1 squared plus 1 equal to 0 so then you can write lambda one minus 1 squared equals negative 1 that means i squared so this is that lambda once it is squared plus or minus i but we can move that i a uh, 1 so it's a 1 plus or minus i those are the uh, uh, two roots that you get but with multiplicity 2 because that's a square here so that means can have multiplicity 2 so with multiplicity with multiplicity 2 so that means the general solution you can have the general solution now so uh, so that means the general solution is general solution is y equal y equal c1 plus c2 x uh, e to the x cosine x plus again we have c3 plus c4 x e to the x sine x the reason is you can see that here you can see that here alpha equal 1 beta also equal to 1 and that's the reason why we have this good um, because this you're gonna get from alpha equal 1 this you're gonna get from beta equal so that is the solution for this one but uh, you know like this is a little complicated because how to factor but we can discuss this in a different uh, one it's like coming from like algebra so let's talk about that like you know, how to factor certain things like you know linear quadratic cubic uh, quadratic quintic like that but the general quintic equation you cannot solve that you know okay you cannot solve general quintic equation but there are still like some that you can solve okay so this is the end of the uh, higher order differential equations